This is your one and only FireSpark81 with your daily dose of video goodness and welcome back to another exciting episode of Arc Mods Weekly. Got some great mods per usual, so let's get to it. The first mod we're going to take a look at today is the Armor Mech mod and it's this behemoth you see here and this guy you see down here. So let's take a look at how you get it, what you need, all of that good stuff. First thing you're going to do, you're going to go into your Ingrams like usual. Now, I don't have anything for you to really type this time because there is a ton of different stuff to learn. So your best bet is just to scroll down till you hit level 48, if I'm not mistaken. I think it's 48. Yeah, yeah, right there. So this is everything, all of this here. You pretty much need to learn all of this stuff. Uh, the weapons, I mean, depending on what, what weapon you want to uh, use, you don't necessarily have to learn each of them. Uh, you can see all of this stuff does cost Ingram points, though. Not a lot. So you got like one here, one here, uh, three there, four there. So, you know, not it's not going to it's not going to break the bank or anything like that. Most of this stuff is extremely cheap Ingram point wise. Um, you're going to definitely need to learn this. This is the fabricator. You need this to be able to use any of this other stuff and actually make your mech. And you can see it's cost. It's 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 low on the Ingrams, but pricey on the crafting requirements with 50 crystal, 400 electronics, 300 metal and 300 polymer. That's uh it's a little pricey. Uh, the rest of the other stuff, I mean, not too terrible. 300 metal there, 150 electronics, that's a little pricey. But uh, this actually, to make it, you need these things here. So you have to make each of these. So it's not cheap. It's not cheap by any means. I mean, that thing right there, uh, that's going to cost you a thousand metal ingots. But uh, it's it's worth it. It's a little OP, but not too bad. It's basically supposed to bridge the gap between, uh, you know, starting and tech, like higher end level stuff without actually being full on tech suit, like like you see us in in here. So it's supposed to bridge bridge that gap. So anyway, uh, once you've learned all of those Ingrams, you're gonna come over here to this thing, and you can see you can craft all of the stuff in here. Uh, you just you know drop it in as usual, and then craft the stuff. Now to craft the mech just the mech alone you need to have the the legs the, the hands the cpu the cockpit and the engine and you actually need to have two hands and two legs so we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna craft that up all right now that we got that crafted we're gonna we're gonna pull it out we're gonna drop it in our inventory here and if we come on out this way and we hit six it places it there it is and uh, that's it. It's just a plain old Mac. It can't really do a lot. You can run. Uh, you can't jump. You can sprint a little bit, but you can't. You don't have any firing mechanisms or anything like that. And it's a bit fragile. So let's take a look at it, how it how it works and all of that good stuff. Once you have like your full on mech decked out, because once you have this here, then you need to build armor. You need to build arms for it, depending on what weapons you want and all of that good stuff. So the next thing you'd want to do once you have your mech suit, the base suit, is you come back up here to your crafting station and you come over here and you'd want to craft some type of uh, weapon, rather it be the flamethrower or the plasma weapon, you know, whatever. Then you can craft stuff. Different things also give you different abilities. For example, uh, you can craft the AWM uh, carbine. This uh, allows you to hit Q, which will close the cab and it activates the fans. But uh, yeah, so it does that. Basically, it gives you some more armor. If you look there, it gives you 400 additional armor. Oh, and it does give you some hy hypothermic insulation as well. Uh, the, if you craft uh, this thing, uh, I don't even know. It basically gives you more armor and some more insulation. So adding the additional pieces is going to do stuff like give you more insulation and additional armor you can see this adds another 300 armor so it's really if you get all of these extra pieces it's really going to give you a ton of armor then for each gun you craft you also have to craft the ammo for that gun as well okay let's take a look at the full on max suit i have this one completely decked out so let's set, set these side by side you can get an idea of what they look like 
We'll bring this one on over here. Pop on out of it. So here's the base mech right here. And here is fully decked out all the additional bells and whistles, all of that good stuff mech. So, you know, not a ton of difference, but there is noticeable difference. You can see the legs have additional pieces on it. It has the full on arms, the cockpit, just like a dyno. If you don't want the thing turning around following you, you can go into behavior and then enable or disable the ally looking. These essentially have a lot of the same stuff that a dyno is because it's kind of a dyno, but not really. Anyway, uh, let's pop on in this thing and uh, we'll take it for a spin. I'll show off some of the stuff. See, of course, it, it still contains the sprint, although the sprint is is pretty much the same for either one. Uh, it doesn't really make a difference whether you have it decked out or not. It sprints for the same distance. I really love that animation. Like anybody else think that animation is just absolutely fantastic. Let's, let's go on over here. You can see it does pretty decent with some ledges. That one it's a little stuck on, but we can get up the ledges relatively well. Go on over here. And yeah, I mean, look at that. That animation is so fantastic. It just looks like he's getting ready to run into battle. And you also notice that when you sprint and you stop sprinting, the stamina regens really quick. So there we just blew our stamina, we stop and it's back. You take it into the water, let's put the cockpit down. You can see that the cockpit closes. Let me uh, actually check this out because this animation is awesome. First off, watch the back. Look at it, it like closes down. Oh, they did such a good job on it. Such a good job. All right, let's go into K mode and then we'll hit it from there. It like seals you up. So good. So good. Uh, no, I don't want to bring out the map. I want to get out of K mode. There we go. So we're out of K mode now. Now we're going to go. Uh, we're going to test this out under some water. So you can see that even though we have the cockpit down, we are underwater and we're still losing uh, oxygen. So that is the thing to keep in mind. Even though you have the cockpit down and you're, you, th you would think that maybe you wouldn't have to breathe, you do. You also, you still cannot jump. Let me get out of this thing real quick before we die. We're gonna turn infinite stats back on. Okay, now that I know we're not gonna die. You can see that if you get in the water, you're, you're stuck. You're stuck walking. So so that's something to keep in mind because you cannot jump. So you will have to you'll have to deal with that situation and find a way to get out of the water. Like right here, we're just completely stuck. We can't go over these ledges. We have no jump ability. That's one thing that I kind of wish it would add is some type of jump ability. Oh, are we going to actually climb it? There we go. Can we climb this one? Nope. Okay, so we got her back up out of the water. Now let's check out some of the weapons. The weapons are really good as well. The sniper rifle was a little bit janky in my opinion, but it's not terrible. I think the thing that bothers me most about it is it's like cooldown. All right, good. We got an awesome target over here. So the first weapon we're going to take a look at, let's get into the inventory here. Uh, what do we have equipped? We have the plasma... What is it? The plasma rifle, whatever it's called. You can unequip anything and re-equip it at any given point in time. Like you can see, we can pull that off and put it back on. It's completely modular in that aspect. And it's going to, they're eventually going to have more parts for you to mix and match with. So you can see we pull the cockpit off, put it back, all that without any issues, whatever. So let's check out the, uh, the plasma weapon first. Now, uh, one thing I noticed is it was a little weird for me to... Uh, add additional ammo when it was equipped in this slot. I actually was having issues with that and I found that to, to fix that, you just unequip it, drop the ammo back in. You can see now that it's at 100%, so we're good to go. It works kind of like the fuel canisters with the flamethrower. Okay, so we have that good to go. Now, what you want to do, if you notice, uh, we can't fire. If nothing, nothing works, we have no reticle or anything like that. What you have to do is you hit, hit control and that puts you in fire mode. Now you can still move in fire mode, run around, all of that stuff. I'm not 100% sure why it's done this way. It might have to do something with the way that it's coded, but um, like you can just stay in fire mode if you want and run around with no problem, or you can pop out of fire mode and, and go that way. But uh, we're gonna shoot this Bronto now. So you, of course you can uh, right click to zoom in and then you can left click to fire like crazy. And you can see that we're doing some pretty decent damage there. What is that pile? Like 280? Per really decent damage. 280 is not bad. You can't hold it down. It's not automatic. It's semi-auto, so you got to keep 
Got to get your finger clicking, clicking goodness in. So that was that. And I mean, that's, that took us a little bit. Let's see what percentage we're at. We were at 100 and we're down to 92. So it lasts a good while on that one. We fired like crazy. Okay, let's check out the flamethrower. And uh, for each one, they have their own specific ammo. So this is the flamethrower ammo. Let's actually see if it's going to do it. Oh, hey, it did it that time. Okay, so here we go. We have the flamethrower. Let's go find a victim. All right, so I found us a good target here. We're going to mess this guy up. So one thing I did notice, which is really cool, check this out. If we go into K mode, you can see that uh, we got our flamethrowers on. Look at how massive these things are. These things are rather large to begin with. But watch this. So we go into attack mode. They actually transform. How awesome is that? Like so much attention to detail and, and this mod is just, it's a really great mod. They, you can tell that the author really loves it and is working very hard on it. Actually comes out, lights the front of it, like just so good. All right, let's pop out of K mode. Let's see what kind of damage we can pull off with this thing. And there we go. He is on fire, does have the fire debuff. I'm pretty sure it works just the same as your normal flamethrower. And you can also see that it, it alternates between the left and the right arm when you fire. You don't fire both of them at the same time and uh, you, you alternate back and forth. So we're not getting a lot of damage pop up there. It looks like 180 every now and then. Um, so the damage, that's, that's not terrible. He went down pretty quickly. Oh, there's some good targets. Let's uh, keep our distance of those guys just a little bit. But those are going to be good. And also be careful because of the fact that you can't jump in and around rocks and stuff, you could easily get stuck. So uh, now that we got some good sniping targets, let's check out the sniper rifle. But before we do that, let's see how much fuel we used. So we're at 68%. We were 100 before we started messing with that guy. And now we're at 68%. So that does go down a lot quicker than the plasma. Okay, we're going to unequip that. We're going to swap to the sniper rifle. We're going to make sure the sniper rifle is full. So we're at 100%. Okay, let's check this thing out. So once again, it transforms. Check this out. So we're going to hit control. Look at that. How freaking cool is that? You just like this huge rifle just extends out from it. Uh, sorry about the camera shift. It does that when you go into attack mode. So we get a bit of a camera shift there. Let's do it again. That's so good. Okay, let's uh, let's shoot these guys. So you got massive range. Look at that zoom as well. That zoom is insane. Look at that. And shot. Oh, one shot dead. 1,340 damage on that guy. Let's, uh, let's try to shoot this guy. Bam. That was only 1,005. Uh-oh, they're coming for us. They're coming for... Oh, are they running? Okay, they're running away. He changed his mind. They want that carcass. But you can't fire very fast. If you notice, like we're getting a... Um... Uh-oh, uh-oh. We might be in trouble, folks. We might be in trouble. Let's try to shoot again. Like the cooldown on this thing is brutal. You, this is actually pretty good that we're getting attacked because you can see um, how much damage we can take in this. We're not getting hit. I mean, we're taking zero damage, one damage. But we can't fire very quick. Like, the the recharge time is crazy. And I actually, I think, uh, oh man, we got a bleed on us. That should, you shouldn't be able to be debuffed with this thing like that. Um, that's actually not good. And even though we're not taking a lot of damage, we're kind of stuck. Okay, there we go. So we broke some armor. So the legs count as, as armor for this thing. Let's see if we can shoot this guy again. And we're still waiting on the recharge for the sniper rifle. And you can't do anything. Like, you're completely helpless. At least we can... Sp can we sprint now? Why can't I sprint? Well. And swing and a miss. And it's. I think what's happening is it's shooting through him. Alright. Maybe I can sprint a little bit. Nope. Come on. Keep your distance. And he destroyed our arms. And I'm going to have to get out and murder him myself. Okay, so that was actually a really good demonstration there of what happens if you get attacked and you get stuck. You can see we didn't lose a whole lot of health because we had an insane amount of armor. However, everything attached to the mech 
counts as armor and it takes damage before the like armor does before the body takes damage uh so now we can actually you know equip something else if we take a look at the sniper rifle uh we don't get to see how much that actually used for some reason it's still at 100 percent maybe bugged or something like that but we can re-equip a different weapon now and be fine so if you're out and about and you get tore up pretty bad you might want to bring some extra stuff with you if we go back in here, uh, you can also see that, and this is something I didn't show before, is that the weight on this thing is 1,500. This thing can hold a ton of weight. So, you, I mean, if you don't use it for anything else, just the, the base, if we unequip everything off of it, that 1,500 could be used to, you know, cart resources and stuff around. Okay, we are back. We got everything fixed up and we're good to go. So let's take another look at this uh, sniper rifle. So we got this Pelagornis over here. We're going to... Uh, just try to try to hit him. Maybe, might be able to hit him. I think no, that's not a Pelagornis. What is that? I don't know what that is, but we're gonna shoot it. There we go. Two thousand damage. Oh, it was an Ichthyornis. Uh, you know, two thousand damage, one shot. The zoom. Look at this zoom. Look at this. Like it's crazy, crazy zoom. But uh, the cooldown, the cooldown drives me crazy. So yeah, that's uh, the Armor Mech mod. It's, it's pretty great. Uh, I really like it and I look forward to seeing what the author does. All right, on to the next mod. All right, so the next mod we're gonna take a look at is called Equivalent Crafting. Basically what it lets you do is swap one resource for another. If you've ever played Equivalent Exchange from Minecraft, it's very similar to that. So you're gonna need to go into your Ingrams you're going to need to type in station or STAT. That's going to show you this, the equivalent crafting station. You're going to need to uh, learn that. It's going to cost you 10 Ingram points, 50 metal, 30 pelt hair or wool, 15 silica pearls, 100 stone, and 300 wood. Once you have it built, you place it down wherever you want and you go into it. Now you have resource to materials, which converts the resource to this stuff here, the basic resource material. Or you have the material to resource, which converts this back to whatever resource you want. Uh, now this is okay, in my opinion, for small exchanges. It gets kind of difficult and becomes a little bit of a pain when you do a lot at one time. So for example, let's just transfer over a little bit of this and we'll go ahead and we'll we'll queue it up so you can see that it goes it goes relatively fast and just kind of goes through it all and then it spoils and it turns into this here so i don't know what what the purpose of the spoiling mechanic is why it couldn't just go straight to the re this resource here i mean it it's the same thing same name it just changes the look so I'm not that's where it becomes kind of a little bit a little messy is with the whole spoiling aspect now if we uh, that was that was something that's simple that you don't get a ton for if if you look if we just do one of these uh, that gets us one so it's a one for one ratio but oh I drug it out too soon and it spoiled so there you go anyway one for one ratio but if we go down here and we grab some pearls and there's a ton of pearls right below me here so i'm just gonna run down here all right so we're back up here we have the pearls we're gonna drop them in there and actually let's just do let's just do one pearl so we're just gonna do one pearl and there you go you can see that gives us a thousand materials so now we're waiting patiently and there goes some and then you continue to wait patiently even though the spoil timer is zero you can see it still takes a hot second for it to all spoil into what you need it to be in order to craft the other stuff. Now, if we come over here and we turn all of that into, say, stone, so we're just going to hold down all until it gets us all of our stone, and now you're waiting for it to craft, and you have to wait for this to spoil, and if you're doing a ton, like an absolute ton, or multiple things at one time, so let's craft some of this too. Let's put another pearl in there and uh actually let's just put all the pearls in there and we'll go ahead and just craft all of that up so click that and there we go so now all the pearls are going so now we're waiting for this to spoil 
and we're waiting for this to spoil and you're just I don't know it I mean look how much we have there now we gotta wait for all of that to spoil into this and the stone didn't really really didn't do it that that much that time beforehand it's it's been a bit of a pain let's just craft a bunch of that uh, a bunch of that and a bunch of that see if it does it again no I mean it's not there I see it's stuck now Okay, and then it converts. So, I mean, it's not terrible. It's really not. Um, but it's a lot better if you're doing small amounts. Like, at one point, I was crafting just stupid amounts of stuff. And that was when it became a bit of a problem. So, I mean, if you're just making small exchanges, like you go down, you get... And you can see this is still converting here. Still, still waiting on all of those pearls. Now, everything has different costs, and it has different costs to make it into so you get depending on what it is here to, to to break it down depends on or what it is to make it depends on how much it you get when you break it down so i mean you like you saw the pearls gave us a thousand per sulfur seven thousand five hundred um and then it breaks down into you know you can use that to make like a ton of wood or a ton of stone so we got that little bit of pearls and we're still waiting for it i mean we could turn all of that into stone like I can just hold down the a key and craft a thousand at a time now you just got to wait for all thousand of those to go through and out of what 20 pearls you're going to get just a ridiculous amount of stone and you just got to wait for it to spoil so the best thing would be to just you know set it to do it and then kind of walk away however you can only do a thousand at a time as you saw like even though I'm holding it down watch you see it there so you're just kind of like hanging out, doing a thousand, waiting, doing a thousand. It's still a very, very handy mod. Like, how many times have you gone like, I have just a stupid amount of wood and you're storing it everywhere and you're like, I really wish I had some pearls. Or you have a stupid amount of wood and you're like, uh, I, I need, you know, 50 metal lingots or something like that. Like, I think it's a great, like, it's great for single player. It'd be, you know, great for uh, PvE. I, I wouldn't use it on a PvP server because, I mean, let's face it, it is kind of cheaty uh, for the, you know, just for the, the, the basic reason that you can go get a handful of pearls and then turn that into a ridiculous amount of stone. That's not really equivalent to me. And so the, the amounts may need a little bit of work, but overall, all, I think the idea is phenomenal and I cannot believe we haven't seen something like this sooner considering how uh, popular equivalent exchange was in Minecraft uh, I, I absolutely cannot believe we haven't seen something like this sooner so kudos to the mod creator for for putting this in arc that's a great idea and uh, I love it like I think it's great like I said now I may have seen it may have sounded like I was being a little negative towards it but I really wasn't I was just trying to show you the one little thing with the spoil timers like it if that could be eliminated, I mean, it would be amazing. But, um, I mean, it's really, honestly, it's really not that big of a deal. You just start whatever you're doing and then walk away from it, do something else, and then come back to it and, you know, get your resources. So it's not that big of a deal. And you don't really have to wait that long. And it's 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 completely not even noticeable at all if you're doing small amounts of stuff. So that's that. All right, well, that is going to wrap it up for this week. Before I go, I want to give a quick shout out to my Patreon supporters. Thank you so much for all of your support. You all are absolutely amazing people. If you would like to help support this channel through Patreon, please check out the link in the description below. If you enjoyed this video, please leave a comment down below. Let me know what you thought. If you're shy and you don't like to comment, just hit that thumbs up button and show your support. Until next time, thanks for watching.